By watching the advertisements at the beginning, you can help me to continue to help you with these free informative videos. Thank you. If you want to find all of them, you just go to genesispc.com, click on videos on YouTube, and you will find all my videos on Excel, Excel VBA, Access, Access VBA, and VBScript. And you just click on any of them, and there you go. Sometimes you have on your spreadsheet separate sections. In this case I did sales for 2010, 2011, etc. The secret of course is that empty row in between that separates the sections. So you have a series of areas. Uh, how would you usually select all of those? You could for instance select column A and then go to home, find and select go to special and then the constants in this case and it will regulate all of this so you have area 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 etc. I'm going to mimic that with VBA. Let's say you want a chart for each section and you want to compare them. So here are the charts for each section so you can scroll to the right and compare all the years. It's not easy to get all those things separated, so we, uh, we have to do some work in VBA. Um, I, I want you to know one more thing. If I do Control shift t I get a drop-down box that allows me to select different types of charts. So if I make this a line chart, that's what I would get. If I make this a stacked column chart, I would get that, etc. I, I don't think I have to tell you more. I can close this. This is all done in VBA. Also show you how did I get that box, Control shift t Where do all these data come from? I put them on a separate sheet and I actually copied that from the help feature of Excel. Uh, all you have to do is, instead of using these things, you put the number that comes with it in the first column. Okay. And then we are going to handle that later on. So if you say, say I want type 57, you get a clustered bar chart. Let's go to VBA. Alt F11. Insert a module there, which I did already. And in that module I'm going to create a handmade sub. I called it create chart. Declare some variables of a certain type. I have to declare them because I have option explicit on. Then I set OWS of the worksheet type to a new worksheet that I put after the active sheet. Then I set O range, which is of the range type, to I use that trick now to select the constants on sheet 1, that happens to have the data in my case, from all the columns the first one, apply the special cells operation with Excel type constants and select all those cells and put them in O range. O range has several areas in it now, so I'm going to loop from area 1 to the last one, from 1 to O range areas count. I set O chart, which is of the chart type, to a new chart added to the collection of charts. We talk to that O chart with and end with. So now I only have to type a dot. It's easier typing, but it also speeds up processing. Set the source data from O range, areas 1, 2, 3, 4, the current region. That means the entire little area or table. Set a certain weight for the border. I made them by default clustered. I could have typed a number here instead, but you can also use the Excel custom clustered. Has a title, true, a caption. I took the first cell in each area, which has in my case the year in it. And then I say I want that on a separate sheet. And that sheet is the sheet we started here, OWS. Then we close the loop, we activate that sheet, 
and we are going to put them in a nice order spread out horizontally. So we go through. Because they are on a sheet now, they are not any more charts, but chart objects. Count how many you have. In my case, I think it was five. Then the width, the first object, the second object, etc. Set the width. I decided on the window width times 0.4. Do that to your own needs. The height, something similar. Then the left position looks a little complicated. With your high school math, you will probably understand that. Take i minus 1 divided by the number of chart objects you have and take the remainder. That's what modulo does. And multiply it with the active window width times. I did 4, 1, so they are separated a little bit instead of 0.4. And then the top of the whole thing. I used the int function that takes the integer part of i minus 1 divided by the number of chart objects and by default I did 150 but that's up to you again. So this one should do the job. Let me show you. I'm deleting that chart. I go to the data sheet but even if you don't that's fine. Control shift C and it created nicely 2010, 2011, etc. Now we have to make that drop-down box. So we go back to Visual Basic. We create a user form. Insert, user form. I did that already. All that the user form has on it is this combo box. So this is the combo box. And you draw it on the user form. And then we are going to put some VBA code in it behind it. When you click on the view code one, make sure that you have a user form activate event. You get the user form from here and you get the activate event from there. We declare i as an integer. We take from sheet 22, which is the sheet that has all those chart types on it, Excel something, and then a number in front of it. Take the current region of all of those, loop through all those rows, and add to the combo box 1, I didn't rename it, so it's still called combo box 1, add an item from that current region dot cells row one two three four in the first column and add to it a dash and add to it whatever is in column two of that sheet and then we get a nice listing of everything and now when someone clicks in the combo box on one of those items what do you want to do how do we get this private sub. Make sure you have the combo box there. There is nothing else at this point. And make sure you have the click event. We declare some variables. I did an on error resume next. In case we can, the active sheet is not a good candidate. Then we look for all the chart objects that we have. And we are going to change the chart type of each object. And we take the left part from the combo box 1 text, that is the text the user had clicked on. And you, you want the left part, sometimes that is one number, sometimes two. So we use the in string one that finds, starting in position 1, in the combo box 1 text, the position of the dash, comma, dash, a literal dash. But you don't want to include that dash, so minus 1. The position is minus 1. If the dash is on position 3, you want the first left two characters. Then we have to call the user form from a subroutine in a module. So I'm going back to module 1, which I did not rename. And I add there at the bottom a very simple subroutine, subtypes. User form 1 dot show VB modeless. I made it modeless so you can still click on the sheet while that box is up and running. 
Uh, if you want to add shortcuts to it, that is something you do in Excel, for the shortcuts come with Excel, you have to go to the Developers tab. If you don't have the Developers tab, then you go to File, Options, and you make sure you have the tab. Go to Customize the Ribbon, and make sure that the Developers tab is turned on. Once you have the Developers tab, you can just go to Macros and find your macros there in Create Chart, for instance, Options, Control Shift C. I would always do Shift C and it automatically adds the Control key. Otherwise, you override an existing one, Control C. And do the same for types. Okay. So now, I can run it from here, or you can just close it, and do Control Shift T in my case, and that box pops up. It automatically got filled with all those numbers and their corresponding features. All you need is that number. So when you click on a specific one, it will do all of that nicely. You, you may have to adjust this much more because your sheet might be very different from mine, but remember you always need empty rows in between. Uh, you want to know much more about VBA and about Excel. So for general Excel users I made this CD-ROM. It's also still very useful for 2010 and 2013, although the interface changed a bit. And this shows you how to do very professional VBA tricks. You can find all of these at genesispc.com. As I said before, the price may be a little high, but you can share these CDs with your co-workers, with your employees, with your boss, whatever, or your friends.